How are you? Alrighty. Please let me know. I'm waiting to make sure that we are live and good to go. Let me know if you are having trouble seeing or hearing anything. And if you are joining us live today, please say hello in the comments. There's a little chat box there, so you'll be able to say hello and where you are joining from. It's so fun to see everybody popping in from all over the place. So we have some coming from Arizona, Pennsylvania, North Dakota, Texas, Houston, Cleveland, Ohio, Virginia. Okay, this is this is going to be so much fun, you guys. I'm so excited. I okay, you can hear me. That's wonderful. I'm just going to give a few minutes for people to join us here live for today's Dog Portrait Masterclass. And I'm so excited that you guys have signed up. This is going to be a lot of fun. It is something I love, love, love teaching. And I can't wait to share with you. And I hope you guys get a lot from this class. You do not need to be an experienced watercolor artist to be joining us today. So do not feel intimidated. You should have received an email from me. And in that email will include a printable outline. So we aren't going to sketch today. We are going to get started with painting. So you don't need to stress. So that is included. And then it also includes my supplies guide. So my favorite supplies that we'll be using and um, a reference photo. So if you have another device or screen, that will be really helpful for today's class. So I have a, an iPad that I'm using next to my painting station. If you are able to, try to grab another screen for a reference photo or print it out. The class today will be about an hour to an hour and a half. Stick around because at the end I have something really fun and special to share with you. And I'll be hosting a little Q&A at the end too. So if you are not sure about a few things when it comes to watercolor or pet portraits or something sparks your interest for a question throughout the class, hold on to your questions until the very end. So maybe grab um, a notebook or something where you can jot down your questions and that way I can not miss them in the comment box and then I'll come back and help answer um, in the Q&A session at the very end. So we are still welcoming uh, live attendees today. I'm really, really happy that you guys are able to join live. I think you definitely will get the most out of the class when you can join live, but don't panic if you can't stick around for the entire class today. I will have the replay available. So once this class is done, I will be posting the replay. It'll be at the same link. Um, you'll receive an email too. So that way you can just paint whenever you have more time. Um, so yeah. We still have some more people, Florida, Kentucky. I am joining you here from my home in uh, Wisconsin. So it's really fun to see everybody. I think that is such a cool thing about pet portraits. And I guess I will just get started sharing a little bit about who I am. If you are brand new, I know I've been seeing some familiar faces and names pop in on the chat, but if you're brand new, I'm Allie and I'm a watercolor artist and I have been running my watercolor business Windswept Design Studio for the last, well, I started it in 2016, so almost seven years now. And um, I not only do pet portraits, but I'll do watercolor wedding invitations. I sell products with watercolor, um, my designs on them, um, but pet portraits specifically have been one of my top selling um, services within my business. And not only do I feel so fortunate to be able to paint hundreds of dogs and cats for people all over the world, but it's such a fun thing for me to connect with you all and share the joy of watercolor pet portraits. So um, that's a little bit about me. I'm so um, excited to share today's painting with you. We are going to walk through a golden retriever and um, this is a wonderful place to get started. Like I mentioned, you don't have to have any watercolor experience 
if you do, that's wonderful, but don't feel, um, don't let that hold you back from today because we are going, excuse me, we are going to get started learning how to um, color mix. And so if you do have any scrap paper, um, watercolor scrap paper, that's helpful just to mix up some of your paint colors and, and practice before we get started and get warmed up here. Cannot locate the email with the reference photo. Okay, so if you are having trouble with finding the reference photo, there should have been an email that came out this morning if you have signed up. Let me see if I can just drop this reference photo link into the chat. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but let me just see. One second. If you guys have any other questions before we get started too, that is something important that I should be answering before, let me know. Let's see. How's your site? Excited to learn. Thank you so much, Wanda. I'm excited to, to share with you guys. Um, hopefully that link I just sent in the chat will work for you guys. If you click that, hopefully it opens the reference photo. Um, the link to sign up for today's class, if you're joining in live and you haven't signed up for it, you can scroll down into the description of our live video right now and sign up and then the email will come right away. Okay, you guys, um, if you have any questions, I will um, try and answer a few before we get started. Um, I've had a lot of requests. I see one for a cat breeds class series. Um, definitely have that coming in the works. I know people are just as much cat lovers as they are dog lovers. The great thing about today though is that all of these principles of color mixing for pets apply to cats too. So that will at least get you started in that direction. We want to try it with acrylics. Um, so today is really going to be focused on only watercolor and watercolor and acrylics work very differently. Um, so I would recommend that if you are following along today to be using watercolor um, because of the way that watercolor layers and the color mixing, it's just, it is a lot different than acrylic where is like acrylic is an opaque paint and it can layer a lot differently. Um, but you certainly can use today's outline if you have other mediums such as you could do, you know, colored pencil, pastels, acrylic, whatever art medium that you enjoy using, go ahead and use that outline as a place to start and a reference photo. Um, that would be something that you'd want to do uh, maybe after this class. Let's see what else, anything else? Um, well, if you have any questions, I will try and look up, but otherwise, please grab a pencil and a paper and jot them down. Okay, I think that does it for our housekeeping items, and I am ready to now turn you guys around so we can start painting. Alrighty, so let me just overview the supplies before I go ahead and get started painting. And then I will zoom in as we get started. So first off, the paper that I'm using today is Arches 140 pound cold press paper. As you can see, there is nice uh, texture and that texture also known as tooth a cold press paper has really nice tooth to it and it allows us to be able to um, color mix and paint and it'll hold paint uh, really, really nicely without drying too quickly. It's gonna give you the most um, beautiful watercolor textures too. The reason I do cold press is because it does have more tooth and we have more time to work with it. Hot press would dry a lot faster the other thing that's really important to note is that um, the watercolor paper you use will make a huge, huge difference, more than your paints, more than your brushes, when it comes to the quality of your painting. 
So uh, 140 pound cold press, 100% cotton paper. So the 100% cotton is the professional grade paper that really makes a big difference when it comes to um, colors and drying. And you'll notice if you try student grade paper, it just dries a lot differently and the color mixing and abilities to hold the, the paint is a lot different. Um, don't let the paper you have hold you back today. Just know that for the future, if you are interested in, you know, diving more into watercolor pet portraits, I recommend the 100% um, cotton paper. Um, okay, so I have a question. So before I move forward, what do you recommend um, for your paper to not curl? Uh, naturally, watercolor, being a water-based paint, does make your paper curl. So if you wanted to, this is just a good old um, painter's tape. This is what I use and I'll paint or I'll tape my paintings down. Today I'm not going to only because I want to be able to rotate it just to show you and pick it up. But if you have a painter's tape that um, you can tape right around the edges of your painting, that will help keep it like not to warp so much. So our paints today. This is all I'll be using today for the class. I only have eight colors. So I have, I have a yellow ochre. This is a Van Dyke brown. This is a Payne's gray. Up here, I have burnt sienna. And this is um, a color that I can't really pronounce. Let's see, it is right here. It's not necessary, to be honest, if you have a burnt sienna, but this is the Quinn, Quinadrone Gold Deep. It just is a much orangier version of the Burnt Sienna Brown. And then I have a Alzerian Crimson. And then right here is a Cadmium Red, which really is an orange. So as long as you have a brown, a really nice dark blue, um, a yellow, uh, and some type of Burnt Sienna Golden Brown, and a red and an orange. You are going to be great for today's lesson. The other color that I love is this Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. And we will not use that until the very end for those finishing details. As you can see here in the whiskers, it really helps to make a portrait look a lot more realistic. So I highly recommend that. And then when it comes to brushes, so you really could get this painting done with two brushes. I recommend a size six, like a size six or a size four. And it having a pointed round brush makes a big difference as well because it's super versatile. You, as you can see here, you can get nice um, detail. And then also you could get a bigger, when you press down with your brush, a bigger uh, wash. The other one that I do recommend, unless you have a nice point on your bigger brush, is something really tiny. So this one's a triple zero, and it is my fine liner brush, and it's what I use to do those tiny detailed hairs at the very, very end of a painting. And let's see, we then of course need our water jar and paper towel. The paper towel I use a lot, so you'll definitely want that. Um, let's see, any other questions? I don't think I see popping up yet, so we should be good to go. Um, let's just first begin with a little bit of color mixing before we dive in. That way, if you are like me, my paints are from a tube and I have already placed them in my palette, but they are dry, so I'm touching them and they are rock hard. It's very similar to working with a cake palette where you already have paints um, that come in these little squares. So we have to activate those to get wet. So that's what I'll do right now. Just going to level us out here a little bit. All right, so. Let's begin by adding in, you can just add a few drops of water if your paints are not wet. That's what I'll do right now. I don't like to make it too wet the way that I paint. I just like to have them activated like this. 
but not sitting in a pool of water. So let's discuss some color mixing. So here's our reference photo. As you can see, there are some really light areas, also some really rich, like reddish brown colors. So I wanna show you a range of what we'll be working with. When it comes to color mixing for the lightest areas of the dog's face, we are going to be working with yellow ochre and also adding in just a little titch of the Van Dyke Brown. It'll help to make it not so um, yellow. And then I dab my paper towel with not a whole lot of paint on my brush. That is going to be our lightest color that we're working with today. Besides, of course, the bleed proof white. And then now some of those warmer golden tones will be a mixture of the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre. So there's some of our mid-tones. And then next, some of our really dark areas that are really nice, rich and red. So the burnt sienna. I have, like I mentioned, that really pretty gold, orangey brown color. If you don't have that, what you'll need to do, that's not a typical color in a palette. So the burnt sienna mixed with the red. See how we're getting a nice warm, rich burnt, burnt red brown there. So those are some of the areas that you'll see in the ear. And then we definitely will be using more of our Van Dyke Brown in areas just as is. So Van Dyke Brown is really similar to any type of chocolate brown that you have on your brush. To get a lighter color, all you need to do is pick up a little bit of water, dab your paper towel, and there we have a lighter color. That is how watercolor works, which I know is a lot different than acrylics and oils. And then what may surprise you is I don't have a black in my palette today. What I do to create black is a combination of Payne's Gray and Brown. So that combination of Payne's Gray and your Van Dyke Brown is going to give what appears to be close to a black color, but not true black. Um, if you've uh, been working with art for a while, you'll find that a lot of artists try and stay away from a true black color just because it's very predictable and it's just not quite as rich and lifelike. So that's why it's fun to create our own rich, dark color. And then again, if you want to use lighter areas, you just pick up more water and less paint on your brush. All right, so that is, in a nutshell, the colors that we'll be color mixing throughout this painting. We will work on color mixing as we work through the painting. We won't have a variety of colors already pre-mixed. What red? We, I'm working with an Alzerian Crimson Red. Um, Windsor & Newton are my favorite paints. Both the Professional and the Cotman brands are, are great. So I love those. Um, let's see. That, I think, does it. I am excited to get started with you all today. Again, I will try and pop up to see if you guys have any other questions. Let me just get this nice and straight for you. I'm going to start with, I have a size eight, but if you if you have whatever your bigger, medium size brushes, size six, size eight, both um, can do perfect a perfect job for where we are going to start, which is up in the ear here. So I, I typically always start in areas like the ear or anywhere that seems not quite as 
um, intense. <laughs> like the eyes can be kind of intense. So the, and what I mean by intense is just that you need to get them pretty accurate for the painting to come to life. So I always like to warm up in areas that aren't quite so much pressure. Um, are we going to paint the background? Today we're not going to paint the background, but you certainly can. Feel free. This is, I typically paint mine with just white backgrounds for pet portraits. Um, but yeah, you're, you're totally welcome to uh, put your own spin on this. Okay. Starting up here, we are going to mix our yellow ochre with a little bit of that Van Dyke brown. I'm just going to get my, there we go. A little bit of that Van Dyke brown. That's going to be our neutral color. I'll dab my paper towel and we'll just start by painting in what feels like hair strokes. So this dog has longer hair texture. So to capture that, I always like to paint with longer strokes. Even though we will layer on top of this, it's just going to give us a nice place to be able to visualize how those hairs are laying on the painting. So again, I'm going to just turn this light down and see if that helps not create such a reflection. And then now what we'll need to do is you can kind of see the shape of how that hair is creating in the dog and start to fan some of those out towards the edges. This next section in the ear right here is a really pretty rich golden color. So our burnt sienna, you can add a little bit of the Alzerian crimson in there. And then I'll even add some of the Van Dyke brown. So again, this is our um, base layer. And if you feel like you have too much paint on your brush, that's why I dab my paper towel quite a bit. And it's all, always great to begin in the areas that you see are the darkest areas. So right there, there's a nice dark shadow. And then I'll start to pull that paint down into the earlobe. Just get rid, of, get rid of some of that paint on my brush and just work it up into that area again. And let's just add a little bit of what we have on our brush into the area we just painted. And it's going to expand as that part is still wet, but that'll be a really nice base layer. Okay, so next we are going to grab some more of that color and jump into where this inner part of the ear before it meets the face. And again, we are going to leave now this part open and we'll go back through and add in more hair texture. But I wanna keep that part as a highlight. So again, tiny little thin strokes is helping us to create the hair texture. So I'll go ahead and get rid of that paint on my brush. So similar to where we were when we first started, I'll just add a little bit of the mixture of Van Dyke Brown with the yellow. Dab my paper towel, I want it to be pretty light. And again, we will do some little hairs and help pull some of that reddish paint that we just painted into the dog's ear. So if you lose that highlight, don't worry. You can always bring some back once the, um, at the end with the bleed proof white. So let me just pull this up a little bit. So all I've done right now for our base layer is add in some of those nice warm colors and then left this part lighter. 
as you can even see some of the paper shining through. So now I will go ahead and add in one more darker layer right here into the dog's ear. And I wanna do that with the Van Dyke Brown mixed with a little bit of the Payne's Gray just to get it nice and dark, rich brown. Not quite the true black we were trying to create on our color mixing, but something a little bit darker. And I'll just add it in right here where there's a nice dark shadow. I'll get rid of some of the paint on my brush and bring up some of that color again into this part of the ear. Just using the very little pressure tip of my brush. All right, so if you ever need to smooth out some area, just use the side of your brush and you can smooth it out while it's still wet and blend it together. Let's work our way up into the forehead now. So that is going to be a mixture of the yellow ochre, the Van Dyke Brown, and then I'll dab my paper towel. I don't want as much. And again, I feel like I have too much. So again, picking up more water and dabbing my paper towel. Using kind of the side of my brush, I'm able to start painting in a little bit of a, a thicker stroke and kind of can do like a scrubbing motion. So I don't want to use too much paint on this base layer because there are some nice highlights. So I'll just continue to use more water and blend that down and start to bring that in towards the eye here. So the thing with watercolor is if you let it dry in an area, it's going to leave a harsh edge like this. So we want to get to it before it dries to help smooth it down into the paper. Otherwise, um, we'll, we would see a really harsh edge. I haven't even picked up more paint. All I'm doing is picking up a little bit of water and continuing to smooth it down into the dog's face. Picking up more water. I just don't want those harsh edges, so I'm fading it down like that. That's a really great way to blend with watercolors, just picking up more water and continuing to fade it into the face like that. Okay, so let's work on this ear, similar to what we were just doing. I'll pick up more of that yellow ochre and Van Dyke Brown mixture. Not a whole lot of my brush, but again, we'll do some of those longer strokes to show the hair texture. You always wanna paint in the direction of the hair too. That helps to sculpt the dog and make him look a lot more realistic. I'm just grabbing a little bit of water and bringing it up. So again, I've left a little bit of paper showing through on the dog's ear there. Just going to wait a second just so you guys can um, feel a little caught up in case I went a little too quickly there. There's a really pretty brown area in here. So all I did was pick up a little bit of that uh, Van Dyke Brown and I'm going to drop it in before it dries to some of those little areas. This is what helps make it look more realistic too is that there's a variety of colors. It's not just using one flat, um, only one brown. We're able to color mix with all of these um, colors in my palette and it really helps to give it more dynamic and lifelike look here. 
Okay, so that was the Van Dyke Brown. And now we'll start to add in some of those reddish, orangey reddish brown tones, which was our Burnt Sienna. The Alzarian Crimson. And the Van Dyke Brown to help darken that color a little bit. Starting with some of the darkest area I see, which is up here since I have the most paint on my brush. Paint in a few strokes. And again, just letting that paper shine through. And then I see another patch down here. It's very helpful to help break your paintings in to shapes. Then I just got rid of that paint on my brush and I'll start to fade that so it's not a real harsh line. Bring some of that down there. And then the way that watercolor works is it layers, it's going to get darker. So we have to let certain areas dry and we can go back and add more detail into the ears. All right. So while we let the, our ears dry, we can start to add in those mid-tones into the face. Let's start with the Van Dyke Brown. And I'll just get rid of some of that paint on my brush. There's a nice dark patch right along here on the left side of that forehead. Now I'm still working with my same size eight brush. I'll just use the tip. And then up here, there's a nice little dark patch again. I have not much paint on my brush, but it's gonna layer and look darker so I just added a little patch there. And you can get rid of that paint and just start to smooth it back down into the dog's forehead. Just like this. And even add a few strokes into the ear. If you wanna soften anything, again, you just grab more water on your brush and run over those patches that you just did if you want to soften that. So as you can see here, there's a really nice dark shape. So I'll grab the Burnt Sienna and we are going to mix it with a lot of the Van Dyke Brown. So it's going to be a real rich reddish brown color. And being careful to not go too far into a spot that's too wet because I want to control where that paint is going, which is this wet on dry technique. I'm able to layer and keep the paint in the exact place that I'm painting it when it dries or when it's being layered onto a dry area. So I'm just starting to paint in some of those real rich, dark areas around the ear and the face. All right, just smooth some of that in. Next, let's work on some of this area around the eye. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush if you have something smaller. Um, a size six though will be perfect if you have a good pointed round brush. This is where we'll start to paint in some details around the eye. Again, I'm going to leave the eye for the end, but I need to create this nice rich area to help set in the dog's eye. So I'll mix the Van Dyke Brown and our Burnt Sienna color here. And we'll first start let me see if I can 
zoom in here just so you can see the eyes a little bit better. So there's a little bit of a sketch mark right here. So that's part of the bridge of the nose that we can see here. And then also one that kind of comes right along the edge of the eye. Then there's a really nice little eyebrow shape. As well as this little circle area around the dog's eyebrow. I'm just doing little hash mark textures to create those hairs. I'll get rid of that paint on my brush and I'll start to blend it into that area. So very little pressure. We'll just start to pull some of that hair out and around. It's going to look funny because the eyes aren't in yet. The eyes are what truly make a portrait come to life. So hang in there. Everybody has that phase where they're like, oh, this is a scary looking painting so far. Um, but yeah, hang in there. We will get to them. And it's all going to make sense. So I ran a little bit of water over that area just to help soften it. I see a, that same... Uh, shape or color down here on the side of the dog's face along the dark shape that we just painted. And right here where the ear meets the face. Okay, things are looking good so far. Maybe just a few little more of those hairs around the outer part of the eye. Let me bring that up to the camera so you can see what I've done so far. Let's do the same thing on the other eye. So grabbing our burnt sienna, mixing with our Van Dyke Brown. I don't have a ton of water on my brush, just enough to make a smooth texture and stroke, but I have definitely a lot more paint, only because I wanna layer it on pretty dark from the start. So we did that little shape there, and now we have a few little hash marks that's creating almost that circle-like shape right above the dog's eyebrow. And then let's see, we have a little bit coming out of the dog's side of the ear here, which we haven't done that shape yet. But there's some right here. All right, so I just pulled that down on the side of the ear. I'm gonna grab just some water and smooth in oops, the area right around the eye. This paper's so great because it's not losing the under layer that I just painted, even though it's somewhat wet. Uh, that Paper texture and tooth is holding it in place, but I'm able to smooth it out. So again, I'm just using what I have on my brush and pulling it out. Always want to paint in the direction that you see the hairs. So over here, let's just finish out some of that darker area was the Van Dyke Brown. And I'll put a little burnt sienna in there, but more so the Van Dyke Brown. It's going to give us that really nice, rich, dark brown. And I'll just paint it right along the ear here. And pull a few little hairs into the face. And up here into the ear. So there I have the nice shadowed area that meets the ear to the face. What you'll find is that as we work through this dog, you want to make sure that you have really nice dark areas in contrast to the nice light areas. 
because that contrast is what creates a really lifelike portrait. If you have a light area and a dark area and they're just too similar um, and they're almost flat, that's how a portrait does become more flat. So you do want to not be afraid to go really dark in those areas you see dark and then nice and light in the areas that you see nice and light, which includes right above the nose here. Okay, let's continue to work down into the face. I see more of that nice warm color. And there's a nice ridge line here, kind of right above that cheekbone. And we can work some right up along there. So again, grabbing more water, I'm just going to smooth some of that out leaving some highlighted area in there, but not too bright. Just using whatever excess paint I have on my brush. And I'm just pulling it around to help paint in some of those little areas for the shadows. which this is great to use right above the bridge of the nose. You'll see that there's a little shadow that kind of helps round that nose shape. So you want to paint in those curvature shapes you see. Right in here, we need to add more of a shadow that I haven't done so far yet. So let's grab again some of that golden color, yellow ochre mixed with our burnt sienna. I'll dab my paper towel, I don't want too much. Let's just paint a little bit of that patch like this. Let's get rid of that paint and just pick up some water on our brush and smooth it out. As you paint more and more, you'll start to learn how much paint to water you need on your brush to be able to um, layer and pull around those paint colors. And if you ever feel like you lost some area after blending, just add some more paint into there. It's a wet on wet technique, so now it's going to blend and smooth itself as you lay it in there. It'll bloom really, really nicely. Okay, working our way into this side of the dog's face with that same color combo of the Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Sienna, but I don't have much on my brush again. Just going to paint a few little hash marks that help define the cheekbone and the side of the nose here. So something like that. And I'll wet my brush and smooth in around that so I don't have quite so much lightness there. We're getting close to around the nose area and the smile. At the very end, we'll go through and add in last details to help it really come to life. Looks like I need to add before I move down further I need to add a little more brown top here to help bring in the ear. It's not quite so light and bright in there. So let's just add a few little hash marks if you're missing some like that. All right. Just going to take a moment and let you guys catch up a little bit if you need to. Smoothing, smoothing some of that out. Okay, I'll bring that up here so you can take a look. As you can see, a bunch of little shapes coming to life, helping to define the dog's facial structures. So next we will work on this part of the nose. 
which is the yellow ochre, mixed with the Van Dyke Brown, helps to neutralize that yellow color. Thanks so much, Heather, says she is loving this class set. I really, really appreciate that. If you guys ever feel like it's going too fast, just let me know. I'm happy to adjust and slow down however you need. So here is our yellow ochre mixed with the Van Dyke Brown. As you can see, there's a really nice dark um, area right underneath the nose. And I'm going to leave that for right now. So let's just work right around that. Bring it down right into those lip areas. Right around the smile there. My goal and hope for this class is to make it approachable and simplifying it um, so it doesn't feel intimidating when you break it down into bite-sized parts. I think that is really helpful. So again, I'm just laying in another layer on this side of the dog's nose, right underneath. You'll see a nice little white light area. Let the paper shine through there, especially up top here of the nose. And then there is just an ever so slight amount of paint right above this part on the bridge of the nose, right there. Wish we could see the photo along with painting. Yeah, I'll see if I can squeeze that in there. It's hard for me to zoom in is the only issue. Um, Maybe next time I'll have to figure out how to do a screen share. But if you need to, definitely, um, again, this will be available for replay. And that way you can have two screens going um, when you go to paint this again. Okay, so now we have the front part of our nose here. Let's just add in maybe a little bit more texture to it. Just pick up a little bit more of the Van Dyke Brown with the Burnt Sienna and drop it in quick before it dries. And some of those little areas right here just to help round out that part of the nose and down along where the mouth hits. So right there, this part will get overlaid with uh, the, the um, pH Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White with the whiskers. Bringing this down like that. We will come back to the nose. Let's just go ahead and finish some of the area of our fur here. So this part gets really nice and dark right underneath where the chin is because it is one of the darkest shadows. So let's start with a little more paint than we have been mixing up. So here I have the Burnt Sienna mixed with the Van Dyke Brown. And then a little bit of the red. Again, if you have that um, quinidrone, however you pronounce that color, gold deep, this is this one right here creates that color that we're color mixing, but I'm guessing a lot of people don't have that, so I'm going to mix it up for you guys. Starting in this area that I already painted, I need to make it nice and dark. So I'll just add a layer there. And working around the mouth, we will return to the mouth. And right around that chin. I need to grab more paint, but this is where we can start to pull that red paint, that reddish brown paint out. As you work your way towards the edge of the dog's neck, Use some long, kind of short and long wispy hairs to help define the side of the dog's neck. So let's add in, as we are working our way down, let's add in yellow ochre with the Van Dyke Brown. And that's going to help us highlight a little bit of area and we can blend it right in to that paint we were just working with. Such a pretty way to color mix. I love transitioning almost like an ombre 
effect as you work your way down. So you can see the paint has color mixed right on the paper. So you'll see some really fun longer hairs. Make sure to paint in the curvature of the hair. Leave some white between the strokes because that will show some highlighted hairs. And now I'm going to work my way up on the right hand side. This time I'm going to curve them back around to the left. So again, just picking up more water. I haven't picked up any more paint yet. And I'm able to keep this part a little bit lighter. Since the light source is looking to be hitting on this side of the dog's face, casting the darkest shadow on the left. All right. Just wanna bring in a little bit of that nice light golden color right up here. And just using more of the thickness of my brush to pull it down. But again, there's a nice light highlight there. So we will leave as light as we can with our paint and water before we go back through and add in darker shadows. So again, I like how this turned out here. I left a little bit of the white paper popping through. It just helps to show hair texture. So before this part dries, let's grab a little bit of that warm burnt sienna and Van Dyke, Van Dyke Brown, and we'll continue to drop it in. No worries if it has dried like it has for me on the left hand side here. You just can layer and it'll show more texture that way too. So again, using the side of my brush for thicker strokes, the tip of my brush for thinner strokes. And there's a nice little um, shadow area. Just painting in that block of color and then I'll go back through and fade some of that out like this. Pull some of those hair colors onto the edge of the dog's face or neck. As well as up into the chin, helps to fade that out. Okay, there looks to be another little band of that rich brown color there, right along underneath the dog's mouth. Just add a little bit there. And then again, Pulling out some of the hairs into the light area. You don't want to do it along the whole entire light area, just enough to show that there are hairs and texture there. You don't want it to look too symmetrical, just more organic. Okay, that looks um, good for our layers there within the neck. I just need to bring some more of that warm burnt sienna color into this part of the dog's face. So we'll start right here. Helps to warm that part up right there. We already did some part around the eye here. It's also a good time to take a look and step back if you need to, to see if you're missing an area that should be darker or lighter, but it's looking, looking good there. It's 
So the nice thing about waiting now to do the eyes is that the eyes and the nose and areas of the mouth are going to be the darkest parts of our entire painting. And that's going to help set those darkest values for us to um, relatively be able to paint other values in comparison to that. That is always a really helpful trick when it comes to painting that part of the dog. So let's paint in the tongue and then we are going to dive into the darkest areas. So it's a little hard to tell if you're looking at the reference photo, the tongue is a little blown out. Um, so with my knowledge of painting so many pets, it definitely needs to be a little bit redder. Not too red though. So we are going to take a little Elzerian crimson and add water to that. And then we wanna add just the slightest amount of Payne's Gray. I'll show you on my paper here. It's going to create kind of that nice reddish um, pink and then purpley hue to it. Not a whole lot on my brush, but always start towards the back of the tongue where it's the darkest and we can layer over that and then we'll start to pull it forward. Just going to pick up more water in my brush. And again, coming as I come forward, there's going to be highlights within the tongue so we can leave little parts of the paper here. And just picked up more water and brought it up towards the front again. So I left a highlight here down towards the middle and also kind of on the side of the dog's tongue. Before it dries though, grab some of that Payne's Gray and we need to paint a nice dark reddish color in the back. Okay, we have somebody who's gonna help us how to pronounce this paint color. <laughs> Quinn Acridone, like bone. Okay, yeah. I don't know if I did a great demo demonstration on my pronunciation there, but that does help. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And then we will layer in a nice dark Payne's gray red combination in the back, almost looks like a dark, dark, dark red. And then with a little bit of water, we'll start to blend that out, including down that little center line it does appear to look almost a little purple-like, but we just want to create a nice rich, uh, we want to create a nice rich shadow towards the back of the tongue. And then what we can do is add more of the red and mix with the orange. Again, it's hard to see that in the reference photo, but there are always warm peachy colors within dogs' tongues. Most of the dogs have that especially up towards the front. So very little paint. I just want to add in a little bit of color along the front and the edges there. And then we can smooth some of that area in and there is also a little bit of a shadow here. So we can smooth that out. It'll start to make more sense when we set it into the mouth with the lips. All right, just gonna take a little pause here so you guys can feel caught up um, with the face so far because what we'll do next is work on the nose, the mouth, and then for the end, we'll do the eyes. I'm actually going to switch to a little bit of a smaller brush. Again, a size six is perfect if you have that. I should mention though, because all brushes are not created equal when it comes to sizing. So do be aware of that. Some uh, brands with a size six are just so different than a different brand size six. So that is also 
every brand has their own little twist on their supplies. So let's start by grabbing the Payne's Gray. And just as is, there's a lot of blue hues to a dark nose like this, especially um, this one. So I'll start with quite a bit of paint on my brush and I'm going to begin by outlining this side of the dog's nose, including here in the nostril. And then we can, you'll see there's just a little bit of a lighter highlight within the nostrils. So using very little paint on our brush, we'll just start to smooth some of that in there, but keeping it nice and dark. Let's do that again over here. There's not quite as dark of a little spot or on this side because of the fact that the light source is coming from that side. But Payne's Gray is a really pretty dark color that has that blue hue to it that I really love when it comes to painting dark features like this. So I'm just painting in those little nostrils. And if you ever wanna soak up some of the paint, you just paint it. Just get rid of all the paint and water on your brush and then you can go back through and almost like lit it, it's called lifting, but you can scoop some of that paint and water out. Another reason why the paper is really important because cotton paper is what helps us be able to do that. Okay, we can kind of shape those nostrils again, but let's start by working down into the nose area. So the Payne's Gray, and we can mix a little bit of that Van Dyke Brown so it'll just help to make it not look quite so blue. There's a nice dark shape right here, but we are going to leave a little bit of a highlight right underneath that nostril. So again, I have quite a bit of paint on my brush, working my way down into the lower half of the nose, leaving a nice light bright area there. You lose it, don't worry, you can bring it back with the bleed proof white. All right, so there we have the lower half of the nose there. Uh, what brand are you using for your brush? I am using an Etcher. There's a company that supplies or sells supplies, and it's Etcher. Um, I love their brushes. It, they're, all the brushes I use are synthetic hairs, but they have nice spring to them which is really nice for painting dog portraits and pet portraits because you have nice control over where your brush is like laying down the paint, which I really, I really like that feeling. Picking up more water and dabbing your paper towel, you'll lighten your paint color. So I have just a little bit of Payne's Gray mixed with a Van Dyke Brown and I'm painting that upper shadow part to the nose like that. I'll leave a little bit of white there. And again, we'll just help by outlining the outer edge there, coming right back down and around. I always like to paint lighter than I think that I need to go. I just picked up more water. and We'll just start to smooth some of that in because we can always add more. It's really hard to take watercolor away. So trying to keep this part of the nose light and bright. Also keeping a nice highlight area on top of the nose. You can do just the slightest little swipe over some of those areas you left nice and bright including down here. It looks like I don't need quite such a highlight, just a little bit. So to help the nose set in and look more realistic, we can fan some hairs out and around it. I like to do a mix of Payne's Gray and the Van Dyke Brown to give kind of that chocolatey dark brown color. But this is where we can add in little tiny hairs 
that helps the dog look more realistic. As we work our way down and around the front of the nose. I'm letting this part dry, but we do need to put that little line that happens down the front of all dogs' noses, so we'll get there. All right. So just a few little hairs helps to make the dog's nose not look quite such like a stark line. Down here, uh, there's a nice dark patch. That'll be a combination of the Van Dyke Brown with the Payne's Gray again. We don't want to match it 100% to the color of the nose. The nose is actually a little bit darker. So we'll start by doing a layer in here. And then as we work our way out from that patch, we're going to paint little tiny hairs. Again, this is what's going to create the realistic look of the dog. If you need to switch to a really small, tiny liner brush, this is a good spot to do that. Just get rid of some of the paint on my brush as I start to paint those little hairs and work my way out. Like that. you up there so I've just created a little bit of texture that appears to look like the hairs. Okay that part I think looks like it's come together we just need to add that little line down the center of the dog's nose. I kind of wait until it's pretty dry so wait until yours is dry but then you can just go and add in that little line. You can even make that into Triangle there. It's hard to see that through my screen. Okay. So looking at this, the dog's nose looks too highlighted for me. So I'll just go through and add a little few dots. That'll help darken and also create some texture of a nose. Again, you can soften it with a little bit of water. So next I am ready to do the area around the mouth and we wanna leave a little bit of white paper to show some of those shine areas um, because the mouth is wet and shiny. So with the Payne's Gray, nice amount on my brush. It'll be nice and dark. There's a nice dark shape right here and right along the tongue. So we'll paint that in nice and dark. I love the contrast between the tongue and where the mouth is. We'll just bring that same paint color right up here like that. So there's a little bit of a highlight right here. Let's just leave a little bit of the white paper and paint right around that. And then bring that color back up. You'll see this part has to be, again, some darker brown, but we'll do that um, after we finish this. To grab more, paint's gray. Let's do the same for this side. So nice and dark, I don't have a ton of water on my brush, more paint than water. Bringing it up here. And again, there are little white highlights that are um, reflecting. So we'll just leave little bits of white showing on the paper. Don't need a ton, just need a few just to give that um, that look here. Just pick up some of that dark paint and bring it down towards the front of the lip here. And 
and then down below. Being careful to not paint in too far here, there is a nice little white highlighted area of hairs. And again, we'll um, emphasize that at the end with our Bleed Proof White. This is a good time too with our little brush. We can add that little line of the dog's tongue in, as well as some of the hairs that can overlap, some of those dark hairs that can overlap the mouth. All right, looking good. Let's touch up that really um, white area that I left to the paper if you haven't done so already. That's going to be a little bit lighter than this dark um, shadow area that we painted, but not by much. It's going to need to be very similar. So the Burnt Sienna and the Van Dyke Brown combo. All I'm going to do is a nice little swipe right along that area of the mouth. And painting tiny little hairs too, that really helps to fade that in. There's a nice dark little ridge here around this dog's mouth. I'll get rid of some of the paint and add my paper towel because I do want to add a little color, but I don't want it to be too dark. Again, over here. Just adding a nice light layer. Okay, so it's good to step back, see where we could be missing anything. I have a little bit of that same paint color on my brush. I can see that I wanna add just a little bit of a darker shadow right around the side of this dog's nose like that. All right, maybe some right above the eye. It's always good to take a look at the entire painting so you don't get too focused in on certain areas. As you work your way around, maybe some right around the mouth here. All right, so the next area would be the eyes. We'll break this down simple so it doesn't seem too intimidating. Um, the eyes, especially when working on a five by seven size portrait, it's nice to use a really tiny fine liner brush. So this triple zero um, or anything that has a nice, this one size three has a really great pointed tip to it. So we will use a lot of the Payne's gray colors within this dog's eye. So similar to how we painted the nose, I have quite a bit of paint, less water on my brush so I can control where the eyes are going to go. We are going to start, you'll see this nice really dark shape right above the dog's eye is like that top liner of the eye. That's the shape we'll begin with right here, painting that piece in. It's always a good place to start is to help create the outer shape of the dog's eye. And then it kind of comes to a point and comes back down underneath. So that's all I did there. It even kind of fans out a little bit on the side there. And then also in the corner, add some of that paint right there into the corner. Let's do the same for the other one. Again, picking up more of that Payne's Gray, working in the top half of the eye first. Where it's the darkest, we'll start to outline. And then bringing it back down to the corner and bringing it underneath. 
So I'm not completing the entire eye shape. Just painting in some of those darkest areas. Again, there's one here in the corner. My first watercolor in 30 years, I do oil painting. Oh, fun. I've never done oils, so I cannot speak to anything about oils. How cool, though, that you are jumping into watercolor. I hope that this one um, helps inspire you to do it some more, too. What I love about watercolor is how easy and the setup is. It's small, and it's very easy to clean up. So I think that's one of the bigger reasons I was drawn to watercolor in the beginning. <laughs> okay, back to our left eye. You'll see a nice shine up top here. So we'll keep the white of the paper and there's a little bit of a lightness on the left and on the right. So I have quite a bit of paint on the brush of the uh, Payne's Gray. So again, just painting in a little shape right here, trying to keep the upper part light and bright. If you need to, don't worry, you can always add a light bright area at the end. Okay, we don't want too much light and bright area, so there's part of that dog's eye. I'll get rid of the paint on my brush, so I barely have any left. And I'm just going to help connect some of the areas that are still bright. You can even lift some, like that. <laughs> and then, as you can see, there are tiny little dark hairs that look like the black hair. So I have barely any paint on my brush, but I'm going to start fanning those out as well. Your outer edge of your eye might still be wet, so you can pull, use some of that paint to pull out from the edge there. Let's see. Hard to tell, but I pulled some of that paint out. And then that dark paint color is helping to set in the dog's eye. Let's do the same for that other one. Again, the paint's gray. And starting with a few little dots here for some of our darkest areas, let's do that. Then I'll get rid of the paint on my brush. It'll create kind of a lighter bluish color with just the paint's gray. I'll start to pull some of that paint down. And you can even see then the slightest little bit of paper showing through. And then grabbing more paint's gray if you need to, but we need to fan some of those hairs out again. So I just kind of paint them almost in like a little spiral. All dogs typically have that little hair that comes out of the eye like that. Let's see, that looks too bright there, so I'll just fill that piece in. Add some back here. And then just use a little bit of water if you need to, to help smooth some of that out. So again, if you lost any highlighted pieces, we can certainly fix that when we do these details very, very soon. But now is a good time to take a step back and look at the painting, which really is coming to life really, really well. Now that we have the darkest areas of the nose, the eyes, and the mouth, it's really helping us to see now and we can compare and contrast what other areas need to be darker. So not much, I don't think, needs to be 
darker, maybe a little bit right here. So we wanna do that before we add in our final details. I'll just grab a little bit of the Payne's Gray and mix it with the Van Dyke Brown. And because it's dry, it's going to layer on there and it's going to create a nice, dark, rich layer. And same with this side. Even some of those hairs that come from the side of the face on top of the ear can add some of those in. I see a nice dark spot that I missed up here around the eye. And we can fade some of those darker hairs down into the body. Looks like there is a nice dark warmish brown color right here. Will help to emphasize also the chin that overlaps. I am very happy with where it's at right now as far as the mid-tones, the light and the dark, all of that. Um, but what I do recommend is always taking a fresh look either the next day or later in the day. You're going to see areas that you wish you would have painted a little bit darker or that you're missing a certain color somewhere. So right now I'm just adding in a few more hair details onto the ear. But now for the final details, again, like I said, I wait until the very, very end to do the Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. This is not technically a watercolor paint. Um, white gouache is, works similarly to this, but I find that this paint color just, or this brand of ink or paint, it's the brightest, whitest color that I've been able to overlay on top of watercolor. And why I love it so much is it really brings out those extra details that you don't normally um, capture, can't quite capture with watercolor. So <laughs> mine is getting drier, but that don't let that worry you. What I do is I pull a little bit out to try and keep it from getting too dried out. And you pull a little bit onto your palette. Can color be added to bleed proof paint? Okay, so that's a great um, question. So the reason why I leave the bleed proof white for the end is that because this is an opaque paint, meaning that it can layer on top, it's not transparent like watercolor that we've been working with. It's, um, it doesn't, it'll really affect your paint colors. So it's going to create them to look more chalky and it doesn't color mix with water as well. So that's one thing that I usually wait until I'm pretty happy with the painting until the end. Of course, you can kind of add in a few darker hair details, but you wanna make sure that you have most of the areas, especially like the base layers laid down first. That's a good question. So let's get started. I have my really, really tiny fine liner brush, a way to get it even finer pointer or pointier tip is to spin your brush in your paint. I added a little bit of water just to help loosen up that paint so it's kind of like an Elmer's glue consistency. We are just going to start painting in some of these nice bright white highlights. So as you can see how well that overlaid right on top of that dark paint. Even some of the lighter paint colors that we painted try very hard to just do one nice swoop. And if you need to pick up more paint and water, this these smaller brushes don't hold much paint. So you can do just a few. I wouldn't paint every single highlighted whisker hair you see in a painting or in a reference photo, only because it gets distracting. So I'll just pick a few here and there. I love it for overlapping some of those white hairs over the mouth like that. So we'll just pick a few with very, very light pressure. As 
Some are thicker, some are thinner. Let's see, add maybe a little bit there, but as you can tell, there's a whole lot more whiskers here and I just don't like to paint too many again. It gets distracting, so just pick a few. We'll grab a little bit more of that paint. And there are little tiny hairs down underneath the mouth chin area here. So we'll just paint some of those. Some are a little longer. And then if you ever feel like you have too much, you just can take either your paper towel or your finger and I just blot at it and it softens it really nicely. This is also great if you lost a highlight area that you wish would have been brighter. So maybe in the nose here, you needed to add back in this little area. It's also great just to help transition some of those light bright areas like this. So super subtle. I'll also use it sometimes in the ears. So there's some nice long, really bright white hairs up there that makes a really nice highlight. Especially if you don't have as much of a paper showing. And then of course the eyes. So if you needed to, you could bring in the white areas of the eye back with this paint too. And also little fun hairs that appear out like we did with the black color, that paints gray, I should say, mixed with Van Dyke Brown, creates fun little hairs that way too. Really, really love how this paint elevates um, a painting where you can bring in those finishing details and it just can look a lot more realistic. All righty. So there we have our golden retriever. Again, like I said, take some time to look at your painting again in the near future, today, tomorrow, whatever. Um, but yeah, I will go ahead and flip us around. I would like to share with you some fun things that are happening. And also we will begin our Q&A. So if you have any questions, this is going to be the time to ask away some questions. I am just going to go flip my lights on. It is very dark. Thank you so much, you guys. Can, okay, let's see. I am going to flip us around. Hello, hello. It was getting so dark in here from, it must um, be raining pretty soon here. So I, um, again, want to thank you guys so much for being here. Beautiful, I never thought mine would actually come out good. Oh. That is awesome. I hope that this tutorial in this class helped to really simplify and make it not so intimidating. And these are um, steps that you can use for, you know, any pet portrait that you do is break it into shapes. Really see the contrast of the dark to the light areas is really, really helpful. And um, just knowing the palette of paint colors, you can paint any animal with or at least any pet, um, dog, or cat with these specific colors. I also will sometimes use an ultramarine blue. Um, I didn't today, but those that's a great color to use for black fur pets because it's really nice in to, to add into the shine um, to show highlights for black fur. So I want to now just share with you quick before we jump into the Q&A, is that my, I have a full course that includes another 30 dogs. So including this one, there's 31 dogs inside of my Master Watercolor Dog Breeds course. And it is now open and I have a special discount for this week only for um, $50 off the course. And inside, 
if you liked this, this demo today, it is going to walk you through how to paint 30 other dog breeds from start to finish, just like we did today. And it's bite-sized video parts where you're able to actually push pause and rewind and work through it. You'll be able to, once you purchase the course, you'll be able to own it forever. So if there's ever any updates to the course that I make, you get those updates. Um, but it's a great place to start if you are looking to get started in watercolor pet portraits, whether it be for a creative hobby or you're wanting to learn watercolor now instead of acrylics or whatever other medium that you've um, painted with. Uh, this is a great place to get started with pet portraits or it also includes a bonus module on how to launch your own pet portrait business. So um, that is now open for enrollment. This week I'm having a $50 off. I'm going to include in the chat right now a link to the details with the special code for that course. So let me go ahead and just add that in there right now really quick. And I will also um, be starting, let's see, I think I gotta do this in two different spots. Okay, so the other thing that if you are looking to jumpstart your pet portrait journey, is that every July I run this challenge called the Dog A Day Challenge. So if you have been around um, my Instagram, you've seen that back in 2020, I wanted to improve my pet portrait skills. So I set out to paint one dog a day for the entire month of July. And it was the best challenge that I've ever done for myself personally, because it really helped. I shared every painting that I did that now has been included inside of the course. I recorded all the paintings and I shared them and it helped me book out my portraits for the rest of that year all the way through the holiday season. So it was amazing. It's a great way to build a portfolio and start getting buzz and attraction. If you are looking to launch a pet portrait business, it's a great way to do that. Otherwise, if you're just looking to have a fun hobby, it's also a really fun place to do that. We have a community, so a Facebook group, a private group, where you'll share your paintings and you can ask questions and get the help, additional help that you need. Um, so that is going to start on July 1st. The good news is that you already have one done. So you have the first one finished and there are 30 other dogs. And so that's why I have a special uh, promo going on right now for $50 off that course. But again, if you don't want to be a part of the challenge, you get to keep the course regardless forever. Um, there will be a very fun prize, the grand prize winner, which will be randomly selected. If you finish the entire challenge, we'll get a virtual one-on-one -on -one, uh, lesson with me and we can work through any pet that you want. Um, it's really, really awesome. Last year I did this um, for my course members. So you have to be a course member to be a part of the challenge, but if, uh, I did this last year and it was very exciting and every day people were sharing their paintings and it's a really fun, motivating way to be able to work through the course um, with a community of other like-minded artists like us. So you guys, I am excited to now finally open up the questions. I am going to take a look at the chat that I have on my computer over here. If you have any questions, start dropping them into the chat box and I will be here happy to answer anything that you have. But again, the special discount is through July 2nd, but the challenge kicks off on July 1st and you can work through the challenge by painting one dog a day or you could batch and paint a few dogs a day. So let's say you have more time on a weekend day, on a Saturday or a Sunday, you could paint three dogs in one day, it doesn't matter as long as you finish all the dogs by, um, I think I have it set through August 3rd is the end of the challenge deadline to submit your entries. So if you have any questions too on the challenge and how that works, happy to answer them. And otherwise, if there's any questions on starting pet portrait uh, business, I'm happy to answer those 
today as well. I am very, very appreciative for everybody who signed up and joined me today. I'm hoping that you walk away feeling a lot more confident and excited to try other dogs and cats. I don't have time to do it every day, three times a week maybe, is that okay? Yep, yeah, so it's, it. however you want to do it, I will tell you it was the one thing that I wish I would have done differently had I, um, I wish I would have printed out or sketched out all of the dogs before starting the challenge because those little um, time slots that you have in your day, so let's say you have a quick hour in your day, but if you don't have the outline ready, that adds additional time. Um, so I would recommend batching and sketching out all the dogs first. And then you can jump in and paint when you do have a free hour and not feel like, oh, I wish I could be painting right now, but I gotta do the outline. Um, how much can you sell a portrait for? So I began back in 2018, was my very first pet portrait that I ever sold and offered and I sold it for $175 right out of the start. So I have raised my prices and that was for an eight by 10 size. Um, but there's a lot that goes into pricing. I know it can be a really intimidating um, subject to think through. Do research, um, start finding some of your favorite pet portrait artists online and see what they could be charging. Um, there are people that offer all different sizes. I personally offer five by seven, eight by 10, 11 by 14. Um, as I've been able to increase my bookings and I don't wanna offer as many, I've been able to um, raise the prices. So very quickly, once you have your portfolio um, of work to share on your social media and on your website or your Etsy shop, um, that's really all it takes is that you just need a few because that is why people are ultimately, customers are ultimately wanting to book with you is because they love your style of your paintings. So the course, again, that I have, Master Watercolor Dog Breeds, it is a really designed to be a starting point for your journey. So it helps you learn color mixing for all a wide variety of a white dog, a a black dog, brown dogs, speckled dogs, um, the golden, the labs, all of those, and curly hair, straight, long textures. I just help walk you through all of intros to all of these dogs, so then you can take what you learn and keep crafting your style as you go beyond the course. Okay, let's see. Thoughts on more opaque watercolors versus translucent. Found out that mine are very opaque. Okay, so I guess I, I guess each have their own benefits on the subject. I have trouble blending and lightening. Yeah, so opaque paint means that the water isn't going to make it lighter. It will a little bit, but it's not like watercolor that really relies on water to make paint lighter. Opaque paint is similar to, if you're familiar with gouache, and it layers similar to an acrylic. So the more water you add into it will just make it more liquidy, but it doesn't necessarily make it lighter. Instead, you're now adding other colors to it to make a lighter color. Um, I guess that I would play with both. I would see what you like best, uh, but watercolor definitely is a much different medium than in gouache, which opaque versus transparent is very different. Okay, let's see, I wanna ooh, jump down, let's see. Do you always do headshots? Okay, this is awesome question. I don't always do, but most of the time I do headshots. So a lot of the times, what I mean by that is chest up is the best type of reference photo, um, only because that way you can zoom in and really focus on the details of the dog's face or the pet's face versus um, when they're smaller, you know, including the body, you're not gonna get as much detail in the face, which is what ultimately customers really want to remember, but sometimes they wanna see the whole body. I would recommend doing a larger size portrait. So 11 by 14 is the smallest size I would ever paint a full body of a dog. Otherwise eight by 10 and um, five by seven are great for headshots. So 
always looking at the camera is really great. As clear of a photo as possible is really helpful. Um, your reference photo really does help dictate the ending result of a painting. Okay, let's see what else. Just tried using the coupon, but it didn't work. Okay, if anybody's having trouble with the coupon, please let me know. I will make sure to get it fixed. Um, it should be dog a day 23. Okay, let's see. How much is the class? So the class is normally 197 for all of the dogs. Um, but it, today, with the code DOGADAY23, it's on sale for $147. And I will make sure that the um, code is working. Let's see. Do you have two courses? I went online, it says 197. Am I in the wrong place? Nope, that is the correct place. So it's 197 for all the dogs, and then you'll get... 40, or you'll get $50 off, bringing it down to $147 for the, the whole course. Oh, good, it worked. Thanks, Jade. I think that means that you joined, so thank you very much. That's exciting. Um, let's see. I was using Daniel Smith watercolors. Not gouache, but I didn't read that the, some brands are more opaque than others. More pigment as well. Yes, um, it is wild... Um, to me, it also makes sense, but different brands, um, like the Payne's Gray, can look vastly different between Windsor & Newton and the Daniel Smith. So um, be aware of that, and don't get discouraged if you find that what my paint colors were coming through um, are, are going to look sometimes a little bit different. So I try my best to explain the paint brand that I'm using, um, but you'll find it's, it's not drastically different, but the hues of Payne's Gray, for example, do look different between different brands. Same with all supplies, really. So um, let's see. How do you get your photo transferred to your paper? So the sketch. So I, um, I actually have a printer that handle, it's very handy and it prints right onto this nice thick watercolor paper. Um, I have the Canon IP8720 printer and I can size it down to whatever size, and it's an inkjet printer. The um, outlines I make at real low opacity like we had today, and it does not bleed into the paint at all. Um, another way to do it though is what I used to do before printing them um, is I would print out or trace the, um, the dog or the cat to get the outline. And then I would do a graphite rubbing on the backside put the, the graphite side down on the watercolor paper, and then I would trace over my outlines. And that would then transfer the graphite outline onto the watercolor paper, kind of like a pencil sketch. The reason why I have transitioned into the tracing method for pet portraits is for a couple of reasons. Um, I always never it felt very, you know, good about it or positive about it at the beginning, but the more I've realized is that they, the customer is paying me for my ability to capture and paint their dog. And so for me, with my realistic style, I really wanna make sure that the sketch is as accurate as possible. It's also a great time saver when it comes to painting um, portraits if you're running a business that way. So those are the two big reasons why I have worked on uh, tracing outlines versus uh, drawing them by eye, which I could do, but it just takes a whole lot more time. Okay, let's see. Are tubes better or pans? I personally love the tubes, really only for the fact that they last a really, really long time. Like this tube right here has so much paint that it's gonna last me, unless it gets super dried out and I gotta cut it up, but it's gonna last me a really long time. Um, the pigments, whether it be a pan style or a tube style, are going to be the same, especially if you're sticking with the same type of brand. Um, the next thing, if you do squirt it right out of the tube, is that you can get the very, very richest, darkest color when the paint is wet. Um, you have to be careful because you don't want to scoop it like a acrylic and paint it on like that. 
um, but you're definitely going to get a richer, darker color when using a wet. But it really, to me, doesn't make a difference. Um, the pans are nice because they come usually in a travel set you could get, and as those paints, as they wear out, you, do, you can buy two paints and then squirt them into your little wells of your palette. Okay, let's see. Thank you so much for everybody who is signing up for the, the class, and I really hope you'll join us um, for the Dog and Day Challenge that kicks off in July, on July 1st. I am just catching up here again. Um, any more questions I could be missing? Oh, let's see. Expensive light box. Yes, yeah, so Kelly brought up a good point too. I think I forgot to mention that. The light box is really helpful. Um, they make them um, very affordable. If you go online, um, you just need a nice affordable light box. And what you can do is print out your reference photo and then put tracing paper over top. Depending on how powerful the light box is, you might be able to print trace right through um, your watercolor. Okay, so Kelly even said that she can get through um, 300 pound paper, which is really, really thick. That's thicker than I was working on today with a light box. So what a cool and quick way to do it too, if you don't have the ability to print on watercolor paper. <laughs> okay, some people are saying the coupon didn't work, but let me see, some say it's working. Let me know if you're still having trouble um, and then if you're having trouble, send me an email. I'm going to give you my email on the chat right now and I will help get this squared away for you. So I just added my email in. If you are having trouble um, adding the code at checkout, there will be a little spot that says add a, add a coupon code. Um, it's in light pink and that's where you'll add in the code, dogaday23. Um, is the challenge the challenge is only for those who have signed up for the course yep it's the reason I call it the challenge is because it's helping students um, I don't want you to just buy the course and not actually work through it so it's a really fun way to work through it with a bunch of other people and sharing your paintings just a really fun motivating way oh how funny so it worked through the link in the chat but not directly online Invalid code. Okay, let me go online really, really quick here and just make sure that the code is set. <laughs> One second. Let's see. How funny. So it says that four people it says it's been working. All right, well, let me know if you guys are still having trouble. It says that people have been able to use it. But again, send me an email if you're having trouble um, at the checkout. Just send me an email and I will get it squared away for you. All right, back to make sure I'm not missing anything else. I'll send a link over to the course again. <laughs> Let's see. One second while I get us all squared away here. All right. Leaving a link in there again to the class. Um, again, you'll have to add the coupon code at checkout. Started printing all the line drawings so I can be ready for the challenge. Yes, that's awesome. You are a quick, you are on it. I love it. Super excited. Okay, I have to run out before the thunderstorm begins. Thank you so much for joining. Is there an Australian Shepherd in the class? There isn't necessarily an Australian Shepherd, but there is a mixed breed that has Australian Shepherd in it. So it looks pretty similar to an Australian Shepherd. Um, oh, good. Thanks so much, Heather, for joining. I'm sorry that that was giving you guys some trouble there. I don't know why that could be 
happening. But it, again, just let me know if you're having troubles. I'm happy to, um, yeah. The dog a challenge is included in the master class. It is, so you have to um, be enrolled into the Master Watercolor Dog Breeds course. And then the challenge kicks off July 1st and we are going to walk through, um, you'll walk through each of the lessons that will paint all 31 dogs. And there will be, inside of our private Facebook group, there will be a post every day I'll make where you can then, in the comments, post a picture of your painting of each dog. And that is your submission for all 31 dogs. And if you complete all 31 dogs in the time frame, then um, there are a couple grand prize. There's a grand prize for um, the one-on-one -on -one virtual lesson with me. And then there will be a couple other discounted coupons for future classes. Is there a list of all 31 dogs? There is. If you go on into the course page, the, um, the sales page, they call it. So if you scroll down all the way, take a look inside the course, it lists all the dogs that are included and shows you how they're broken into bite-sized parts. Um, but if you click the down arrow, it's going to show you all 31 dogs of the included dog breeds. And I am always open to having more suggestions. I have a list for almost like a part two um, of dog breeds that people would love to see in there. Um, do you walk through how to trace the outline from a photo? Um, in that specific course, we have in the intro, let's take a look here. Um, it, it has like a get started here and then I don't believe that there's a video walkthrough, but I can certainly do that. I think I have a live recorded inside of the Facebook group, um, but I can go ahead and add that into the course. So then that way it shows it um, easily for you to get the, the outline onto your paper. Okay, another great question. Let's see, do you go over how to take your own photo and make it into the black line design sketch. I actually have a YouTube video that shares my sketching process, so I can just include that. If you, actually, if you go over into my YouTube um, main page, there's how I sketch the dogs is over there. How do you print on the watercolor paper? Do you feed the eight and a half by 11? And the image is in the center. How can I print two per page? Um, so the, Watercolor paper, my printer, everybody's printer is going to be a little bit different. Uh, mine can print on varying various sizes. So I'll cut the paper down to the size that I want to print on and then I'll print that exact size document. So for example, this is the five by seven. So I'll cut down a five by seven piece of watercolor paper. And then when I go to click print over on my printer, it's knowing that it's printing on a five by seven. Now, if you're wanting to print two on a page, so let's say you want to print all of the dogs, I should mention, are sized to five by seven. But if you're wanting to print two, let's say on an eight by 10 or 11 by 14 size piece of paper, um, you can, a lot of the times the printers, the um, when you go to click print, it'll say like two up on a page. That's what you would click to get two up on a page which is a great way to save paper. Um, let's see. Let's see, or you could put them in a sketchbook. I've seen people do um, a whole dedicated sketchbook to all the dogs in the course, which is a really cool way to flip back and see. Um, but let's see, is there a Maltese? There is not a Maltese, but there is a dog that looks similar to one. It, it is a Shih Tzu kind of looks more Maltese in the coloring, I would say. I'm gonna guess, Denise, that you must have a Maltese. Let's see, are there any other, any other questions that we have here? Again, the replay will be available for this, um, this class right today at the same link. So you'll also get a replay email um, if you weren't able to paint with us during the whole class. And again, the course is on sale through 
um, July 2nd. So there are a few days for you to uh, sift through and look through the page of the course just to see if um, it is going to be a right fit for you. You do get seven days to try out the course. If you don't like it, of course, I am happy. I wanna make sure that you are happy and you can um, get a refund on the course. Unrelated to the course, but I'd love to see a video on painting. Ooh, a Sphinx cat. What a cool, that'd be a really cool one to do. I've done a black cat tutorial class with Etcher. Um, I know that I've had a lot of um, people requesting cats. So I also want to do a workshop around a white cat. I think that would be really helpful because I know white fur pets are really tricky. So that's been one other thing that I have on my list. Sign up. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. Either way, I hope you guys have really enjoyed today and I'm excited to hear um, and see your paintings. So please tag me if you do um, feel um, brave to share your work. I would love to see it. You can tag me at Windswept Design Studio or send me an email. I love, love, love connecting with you in that way. All right, I'm just going to make sure that there's not any additional questions. Um, make sure that I didn't miss anything. Otherwise, I am very, very grateful for you guys for joining me today. Um, enjoyed as always. Thank you so much, Judy. It's always fun to see your name pop up. It's been a really, really fun way to meet so many people around the world um, through watercolor pet portraits. So thank you so much, you guys, for being here. And with that, I will sign off. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out via an email. Okay, thanks so much, you guys. Happy painting.